I remember pull, the first time I pulled up, he was like, yeah, I'm at the sugar mill, the old sugar mill in Wailua. And I was just like, I could see the smokestack off in the distance and I was driving towards it. Like, had no idea. It was like before the phone thing where you like follow the address. It was like, I was literally like looking through like cane fields and stuff at the smokestack. And I remember trying, just trying to drive towards it and I pull up and I was just like, this is where is he gonna chop me up in little pieces or, or is he gonna make me some boards, you know? I, I'm, I mean, I moved here to go to school when I was 15 in high school and um, you know, the North Shore to me at the time was like a wonderland of like epic waves and you know, there was pretty girls on the beach riding horses and waves were always huge and everyone ripped and the, all the pros were here and just like this epic epicenter nucleus of like surf action. And you know, you couldn't drive like 50 feet without seeing like a pro surfer. This is it. When, when it comes to like surfing in Hawaii in the wintertime and, and when, it, when it comes to like as far as the focus of the, the surfing world, it's, it's here, you know, in, the, in, in these two months. So Wailua, it's a town on the North Shore, which used to be the hub. It used to be the economic hub of this part of the island, where you came to work and you came to bank and there was a market there and you'd shop. But when the sugar mill shut down, this place got really quiet. Uh, a lot of jobs were lost and a lot of folks went to Haleiwa. But uh, we've seen sort of like an organic regentrifying of the mill. I don't know what the, uh, like the, what it's zoned, but it's not zoned like residential. I guess the process of making sugar just leaches a bunch of bad shit in the ground. Yeah. Like whatever this is for sale for, if it was just normal land that you could build a house on, it'd be gone long ago, right? You know, surfboard building is really unique in that these are all, every single board is handmade and every guy who, you know, works on it, you know, he's really well trained. You, you don't, I mean, you don't work in this kind of environment like the sugar mill and be a hack. You know, those guys get weeded out really quick. So everybody takes a lot of pride in what they do, and so therefore there's a lot of ego connected to it, and with ego comes character, you know? Yeah, but there's an immaculate area that a lot of people don't see. Like this pin line's probably, look at silver to one side by maybe a millimeter, but nobody's gonna see that except for us. Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's characters. We get to talk to um, Al Chapman, and we have a Kila Ipa, who works on the other side of the mill, he knows that we have frozen otter pops and on a hot day, he just walks straight in here, go to our freezer and just grab one, have a couple cool off and then, and then walk out. So, uh, what's happened here I think is really cool. And it was never planned. It was never a vision of mine. I, I, I don't think really it was much of a vision of anybody else that was in here. Yeah, there's they're, stuff they're that doesn't happen in most places. Yeah. And like these guys, like Larry Peterson in here is like literally one of the best like individual start to finish board uh, glassers on earth. Like he can make a board as good as anyone I've ever seen anywhere and he does everything from start to finish by himself. He makes laminates for most of the people around here, you know, like stickers for the boards or t-shirts or hats or whatever, you know. These guys build like the most high-end windows and doors and stuff like crazy shit. Like Sean Penn's house got built at VLAN and they built the doors and the windows for it, you know. It's like they're um, it's all these craftsmen and they've been in here for years, like forever, you know? So what I love about this place, you know, you, you walk up and like this door, this was it, you know? You're like, you're all, oh cool, some surfboards. Like, I'm really excited to see this when you walk in here and you're like, oh wow, people trip out, you know? Like this is like a secret world that, it's like a toy shop, you know? You're like, all right. I just always collected the covers from when he was a Grom, all the way up, you know, whenever you got a cover shot somewhere, there's more, we got tons of them. I got like, here's John's first cover. I was in Bali when I heard about that one. He's 13 right there. So yeah, so we have, this is our showroom. Um, it's a little bare right now. Here's a, um, a signed photo of Andy. Yeah, and that, like that board, that's John's first board I ever shaped him. Yeah, these are all for Koa Rothman. 
first ever kid to be in the Triple Crown. Like literally, he was pal out pipe, age 13, with Shane Dorian in a heat. Um, that's, uh, I think, at Alamada Bowl. That's, that's Derek, Derek, that's Derek at Pipeline. Let me show you something else really quick. So, it's so dusty up here. This is part of, this is part of Andy, Andy Iron's last quiver. That he never got to ride. I was actually finishing up his North Shore Quiver the morning I got the phone call. Well, yeah, most of these guys have been working pretty much shoulder to shoulder in these different shops for years. You know, like Eric Arakawa over here, he's, you know, built boards for the best surfers in the world for a year on and year out. You know, if you go over there, you're expecting to get the top of the line piece of equipment. This guy's been here building boards in 30 years, 30 plus years on the North Shore. So, you know, you get exactly what you want. Same, you know, with a lot of these different guys here. We're making a, a we used to be the sanding room. We're making it into a, a, a antique store. And this is my shaping room. And it's really, it's, it's great to have that relationship with a single shaper and work with that person all the time. And I can just text John and say, hey, I need a, 6.2, a 6.3, a 6.8, and a 7.2. And he'll make them, and I guarantee you they won't be too thick, too thin, too wide. Everything will be dialed like. Do you remember looking at my hands, looking at my tools, and you realize, you know, I really do know what I'm doing. I genuinely know what I'm doing. And it was a good feeling, you know? The knowledge of the board builders in this shop, you know, it goes pretty deep. That's about a third of the templates I used to have on stock. Wei Takoro, Eric Arakawa, Bill Barnfield, these are all the guys that I grew up, you know, kind of in the industry with making fins. And I can show you, like in the office, you know, kind of finished product, you yeah, know, a variety of stuff in there. Yeah. This is kind of what the fins look like nowadays. I kind of originally kind of started with uh, multiple stripes, but the floral stuff is kind of what we're known for nowadays. In shops around town, you, you know, the Aloha prints are what they do best with. I think, you know what, Andy Warhol said he wanted to be a machine. And that, when I heard that, it hit me like a ton of bricks because I kind of surfed a lot of uncrowded spots and shitty windy spots and uh, just was into being alone in the ocean. So in this job you can kind of just close the door and disappear. But knowing pretty much everybody here helped. Knowing that the guy who owns town and country is going to throw me some kind of bone if I go, if I dry up or get slow, it's, it's really helpful. It's like a good cushion. But everybody in this industry kind of, we all kind of help each other. Whether the guy does shitty work or uh, is a junkie or a drunk, everybody still kind of will throw someone. No one's gonna drown and die. I think everybody's making right now, I think what you're seeing is probably the best made boards in the world that come right out of this little dumpy looking place out here, this area here. I, I, I'm sure of that, you know? I look forward to Monday mornings coming to work. And so it's really, it's, it's about, uh, I think it's about the relationships. I think it's one of the few careers you can have here, maybe on the North Shore, on Oahu, where you can create a circle of really close relationships from people all over, all over the world. It's kind of like I am living like there is no tomorrow. I'm like doing it as, as good as I can, and as fast as I can, and like this thing is just gonna, I'm just waiting, every time I go to the post office, I'm just waiting for some letter from the landlords that you guys are just done. We were fortunate to uh, be able to use this, and it didn't turn into anything else other than just industrial space and first come first serve so it's there's no more space here you know so everybody everybody has people coming to them asking for you know hey is there no place to work you know and it's just it looked like even just like the look of it is killer you know it's like, like a movie set or something you're like i want to make a, a a killer surfboard factory area you're like here you go yeah. you couldn't make it any better <laughs>